<laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's the Todd and Aaron Morning Show on GetPartDaily.com, the award-winning morning stream. That's not That's not a stream. No, it's not. No. But it could be. Sure. Someday. As far as everyone knows. If everything goes well, all right. we'll stay out of prison. First of all, good morning, everybody, uh, especially on Facebook morning. I know the story. I'll tell, no, I, the story of Trevor the Roach. I'll be telling that in a minute. But Trevor the Roach. Let's, let's go to the camp. Never forget. Good Mountain morning, Cam. Mountain Cam. It's brought to you, of course, by Black Diamond Experts. Experts in electric, plumbing, heating, and air. And uh, coming up today, this is so cool. Crossing the double white line is going to cost you. It's going to cost you How a much? lot. Uh, a, a, a guy gets married and throws himself in a river. That seems really flattering, right? I guess. Right, And once again, the tragic tale of Trevor the Roach. Trevor, forget. All right. Uh, let's yeah. talk about this fine that's going on. Well, uh, On I-15, I-80, anywhere there's a... Is it an HOV lane line thing? I am so screwed. You know this is going to be me. This is totally going to be me. I'm not going to bail you out. It's a crackdown. They're trying to nab uh, drivers who violate the express lane on I-15. And they jump in? Because it, it, the thing is, you know, you wait for a long time to get, and then you got that, 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 and then you can finally whip in there, but by then there's like a thousand other people, or you see the big traffic jam, and you're thinking, I'll just whip in there now, because I got kids in the back. It's not like I'm cheating, but you cross it's cheating. the double line. Unfortunately, they say that there's been a lot of crashes because of that. They say they, people don't think it's a big deal, but actually, I guess the collision rate, exponentially rises. How are they going to solve this problem? They are going to charge you $337, which is the maximum allowed by law. How did they come up with 337 why Maximum they, allowed by law. Why, why'd they set it that way? Maximum allowed by law. Round it off. Okay, you know our legislature, right? 340 Are you really questioning this? It's $337, okay? So in any case, they catch you crossing the double white line, it's going to cost you. Like a, that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. That's a car payment. So Do they still have those passes that you can buy? Yes. And how much are they? And I think they always run out though. Only reason I don't like those is they also monitor your speed with those. This is how you get a this is how you get a pass to go when you're a single person in your car you pay into for the it. fast line. Yeah, you, you pay, pay for it. it. Yeah. Then that says two dollars, you can go two dollars and you can get to Payson. For two dollars, none of that has anything to do with the fact that you still can't cross the three, white line. Three hundred and thirty-seven dollars. Three hundred thirty-seven dollars. I got to tell you, I started doing some reading. Okay, are you talking about Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico. You yeah. know, we, we've been talking a lot about um, the shipping, uh, and they just uh, uh, eliminated a rule so that the other ships can come in if they're from different countries. Finally, thank you. So they got rid of that, and then I started thinking about this, and they're talking about how hard it is to get the stuff in, uh, supplies in, because it's an island. Uh, when we have a fleet of, the, I understand there's an aircraft carrier on its way, or it's probably there. Yeah, by there now. is now, and I think five tank. Uh, oh, there's eleven five tankers now. From stacked all of them, up, they're all stacked including up, including Europe and everywhere else. So yeah. what I did is I wanted to figure out how this works, and Puerto Rico is a hundred miles long and thirty-five miles across, which is great. It's because pretty small. I didn't realize how small it was. I know it's like uh, Connecticut. And so the other deal is, is the fact that it's got several ports. Now, not all of them are big enough, you know. And so I started checking it out and seeing, you know, so if you get it to the shore, it's only 35 miles across. So if you can get it Even with the roadways staged, damaged, you, your right. chances are still excellent, and you can still do drops. Well, these are, these, I'm just talking about ports yeah. with these big freighters and stuff. And then airplanes, they yeah. have three major airports. That was my next question. Right, what about right. airports? Where and then they have in? smaller ones. And mm -hmm. then there's military bases that have been closed. Mm -hmm. And so they have all these different places. So And they're running out of water, and they're like, we're going to try to start getting you stuff at the 1st of October. And it's like, that we're going to be dead. Then. So they're... I mean, uh, and this is a U.S. This is us. This is part of us, and it... Was incredibly slow. Even if it was somebody else, well, you jump it. And I understand the, NF question, the NFL question is really big, but there are people going to um, uh, die without their medication. Just a little seems, heads up. So anyway, so it looks like things are starting to, to change, mm -hmm. and they seem like they've gotten a flow. There was kind of a lapse there, but it seems like now they started to to make some headway. And remember, only 5% of the country has uh, uh, electricity. Well, you know, it's ironic, but a lot of times the way you get more attention on something is through celebrity. And there's a couple of stories we'll tell you about Puerto Rico later. Uh, Jennifer Lopez donated a million dollars. She's from Puerto Rico. And she donated a million dollars to the relief effort and went, why isn't anyone paying attention to right. Puerto Rico? Right. And so once the celebrities started getting on the on kind of on the bandwagon. It started rolling and it's been a little better, but it's sad that it had to get to the point of somebody, a pop singer telling you that we should pay attention to right. something serious. Right. 
I don't know. And I was just a, I, I just, I don't know if I'm a nerd, but I just got really interested in, on, on... The feasibility of and how, how and what. what. How the country was laid out and, mm-hmm. and stuff. And, and I realized Connecticut, 100 miles long, 35 across. It's really not we bad. We should be able to do better. LDS missionaries all came, traditionally they sent LDS missionaries from other states and such into disaster areas to help. But in this particular case, I guess things are so pulled them out. damaged that they pulled them all out. Um, so we got 23 of the missionaries here in Utah. They're welcomed by their new mission presidents at the airport. Um, the other 155 missionaries have been reassigned to missions around the United States. And they'll go back in when? As things get probably stabilized. Not, probably not. This is probably their set, their position so now. And, and don't this forget is, that they were in financial ruin before this happened. So they're going to need a lot of help. It's interesting. This is only the second time in the past five years that the LDS Church actually evacuated an entire mission. Usually really? they keep them in there and they say hunker down because you're going to be volunteering to help afterwards. But right. um, they, they took out 204 missionaries from the Philippines um, because of Typhoon Haiyan. So, because that was the same kind of like decimating everything in its path kind of situation. But they'll, they'll uh, just, what do you do? I mean, the size of this thing. But anyway, well, donate to the Red Cross. That's what you do. Yeah, Red it's Cross. Si- it's simplest. It's easy. And um, Not any other self-serving groups that are having you filter the money through them so that they're KSL. Really um, special. Uh, and, and actually packing cans and stuff into a truck. Doesn't it's do anything. much better if you donate to, uh, because then a case of peanut butter gets there, not a jar of peanut butter, and then it doesn't take people to sort it once you get there. And and not only that, for the amount of money you would spend on a, a jar of peanut butter here, they have connections that can make it a case of peanut butter So there. people were actually loading from Utah, loading a semis, take them down to, to uh, Texas, and... Everybody's heart is in, in a great place, it but... Is. It, they do, everything is done differently now, and they found faster and more efficient ways to put these kind of areas back together. You know, here's, here's a great analogy. Uh, the food bank right here in Salt Lake City. People have food drives in their office and stuff, and that's important because you're giving awareness and you're bringing that to the forefront and, and, uh, other than the holidays. And it's really good. But your donation of cash, you donate a dollar, they can make that into seven dollars because they are buying of qualities the yeah. and they have uh, matching grants m- and manufacturers who say, you know what, we're going to put this aside for you. So that's cool. So that, that effort of doing it yourself is great, but a dollar is worth seven at the food bank. So anyway. Okay. Moving on to something that I find very perplexing now. I'm checking Once it. we get to the, the, the U.S. Supreme Court, this is like the big cheeses. This has got to be all the groundbreaking taking it to landmark the Supreme era things Court. like Roe versus Wade and, and the Love Case where Schmidt versus African Americans were allowed Bunkleville. to Bunkleville. You know, the famous case in nineteen sixty three. And then here in Utah we are proud to present excuse me, excuse me. to the US Supreme Court. Supreme Court. And they finally got to argue this point. Groundhogs. Prairie dogs. <laughs> Prairie dogs. That's the groundbreaking social experiment. Residents, residents of Southern Utah have asked the Supreme Court on Look Tuesday to hear their case. That little bat Look. bugger. <laughs> Look at that face. How could you be mad at that face? Oh, wait. He's on my private land. Guess what I can't build? My house. So explain what happened. It was something to do with uh, okay, so, restrictions because so they were endangered? The, the group of people, it's the people of ethical treatment of property owners. Oh, funny. Is, uh, has gotten together, and the prairie dogs, they, they bought some property, and they were going to build, but the prairie dogs moved in first. There is a protection order uh, against the prairie dogs that was established, uh, and they can do whatever they want. And evidently, even on private land, BLM land was okay, uh, but you wouldn't build your house there. And so they have taken it to the Supreme Court to say, listen, this is private property. I bought the property. The prairie dogs moved in, and now you're telling me I can't build a house. You can't build um, uh, playgrounds either. They were going to do that. They were gonna, it, that seems sort of erratic for a, a generalized lawmaking thing. You, you know what we need? We need a wall. Between us and the prairie dogs. Well, it has to be about this tall, but we need a wall because <laughs> I don't think prairie jump. I don't think they jump. I don't think they jump, and I want a wall you can see through. That way, you can see them on the other side, like you can chicken taunt wire, them. like chick. Well, except no, gopher wire, prairie prairie wire, and then uh, you can see through. But remember, it only has to be about this tall because <laughs> they can't jump over. Why don't people ask me? I can solve problems. You can get a roll of chicken wire for like six dollars.
You just don't take me seriously, do you? <laughs> I'm sorry. I love animals. Oh, okay. And the way they taste. But prairie dogs, you gotta, you got to make some decisions on that. And it still cracks me up, though, that of all the, the groundbreaking cases that have gone to the U.S. Supreme Court, this one will be known for prairie dogs. Here well, that's American action right there. Okay. That's what that is. You know, life can be really tragic sometimes. And it is. And it's kind of heartbreaking. Uh, there's a Salt Lake City guy. I, I love him now. He's on Twitter. He's known as Grifter. 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 He was up at a computer security conference in Louisville, hmm. and he'd gone to Smashburger first. Ew. And he'd Did been, you see that? And oh. he'd been eating his hamburger, and right. he was sucking on his his milkshake, and something got caught, and he's like, oh, maybe it's a strawberry, and he sucked what, really hard. was that thing we just showed him? And if you'd like to show it again, it was a It was a roach. roach. It was a hot roach. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is how badass this guy is. Unfazed, he took uh -huh. a picture of the roach there and then it tweeted it out to the other conference goers with a name for the insect. Right. Trevor the Roach. He says, Why Trevor? Watch out, DerbyCon. This is the roach I sucked up the straw of my milkshake from Smashburger. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name him Trevor. And uh, Trevor? so the hashtag was created, Trevor Forget. Oh, no. Instead of Never Forget, it's, <laughs> it's Trevor Forget. So they all start tweeting this and then right. it starts going viral. And then on Twitter, it showed up on the trending hashtags, and people are like, Trevor, forget. Trevor. I saw it, and I knew it was Salt Lake City, so I went to Grifter and take a look at it, and I was dying. So I asked permission if we could show the photos, and he went, of course, Trevor would want you to share his story. May he rest in peace. Trevor T. Roach, 2017 to 2017. Trevor, forget. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> did, did Smashburger ever come out with anything? Well, here's the funny part. He actually wrote a couple of tweets later. He says, by the way, if you're wondering if I'm ever going to eat at Smashburger again, of course I am. Their burgers are delicious. <laughs> I'm like, but you had a roach in your... That's funny. So he wasn't asking for money. Trevor, Trevor forget. It was just a memorial for, just, for Trevor. Just to remember Trevor. That's awesome. He would want you to know his story. That's so funny. I know, right? Time for information. Okay. Right. Fine. Pull yourself together. It was a roach. It was in his mouth. Trevor, forget. All right. Da I'm just dying now. I'm All sorry. Right. Daisy is in the Get Part Daily Newsroom. And, of course, she's brought to you by Fink and McGregor. Mortgage is made simple. You know, you can get a mortgage with a credit score as low as 600. Go to fink-mcgregor.com. And also buy all Utah plumbing, heating, and air. Uh, this is the perfect season to get them in and do turn some things off and some things on. Uh, it's allutahplumbing.com. Daisy, my darling, what is going on today? Hello everyone, here's what's making headlines Friday, September 29th on GetPartDaily.com. A home invasion in Kuna, Idaho led to an officer-involved shooting and a home burning with at least one person inside late Wednesday night. One of the people burned in the house fire was flown to the Salt Lake City Burn Center. A woman called 911 saying a person was trying to get into their home and deputies arrived to find a man with a long gun coming out of the home. Deputies told the man several times to put the gun down, but he refused. A short time later, deputies fired at the man. Approximately 15 minutes after that, the home was on fire. Two of the adults inside were able to get out. The third, an elderly woman, was not. Salt Lake City Police are looking for a suspect who robbed a car wash wearing a clown mask. The robbery occurred at the Mr. Car Wash at 1480 South 300 West at 8.40 p.m. Wednesday. An employee was confronted by a man with a handgun. The suspect took money from the victim and fled the area. The suspect's described as a Caucasian male, 40 to 60 years of age, wearing a clown mask, black hoodie, blue jeans, and black gloves. Anyone with information is asked to call the Salt Lake City Police Department. <clears throat> the Utah Department of Transportation is advising drivers to plan ahead for two major road closures on Salt Lake County freeways this weekend. SR 201 in West Valley City will close Friday night and the ramp from westbound I-80 to the I-215 East Belt will close in Parley's Canyon from Friday night through Monday morning. SR 201 will close in both directions between Redwood Road and Bangata Highway as early as 9 p.m. Friday. During the closure, crews will demolish a temporary bridge on I-215 that was built so lanes could remain open during construction. For the latest information on traffic conditions, visit the UDOT traffic website. And now to the Wasatch Front weather. We will continue to see gorgeous fall temperatures in the low 70s heading into the weekend. Sunday then drops to the low 60s with partly cloudy skies. That's it for now. For more local headlines 24-7, go to GebhardDaily.com. Todd and Aaron, back to you.
Thank you, Daisy. Uh, you know what this is, the time of year, besides to smell like pumpkin spice? It is a, a transitional time, and that's why all Utah plumbing can be there for you. Because, you know, it's like air conditioning over to heat. You know, you turn that heat on for the first time. You have that smell of not pumpkin spice, but of dust burning, which is which is okay. And then it's a time to turn off your hoses and turn off your outside bibs and all this stuff. And that is why... All Utah Plumbing can be there to help you out because there is so much they can do for you if you have a transition. Did you know, I learned this, that uh, if you use the small little thin furnace uh, filters, you're supposed to change those out every 30 days. What? John and his crew, they're the ones who know all this. They can help you out. You know, if it's something simple, they can do that. It's a, if it's a remodel, you want to get something done before Thanksgiving, now is the time. AllUtahPlumbing.com and uh, give them a call. You're going to love these guys, by the way. All right, so tell me about this. Tell me something good. Now, this story amazes me. It has me. to do with Nazis. Well, this story starts out as like a recipe for utter disaster. I mean, it's like, really? You really put this one together? This is Michael Kent. Um, he's a 38-year-old father of two, and okay. he belonged to a very violent white supremacist group in Arizona. He got sent... Uh, he belonged to. Yes, he belonged to. Used to. Yes. Okay. Um, he was sent to prison for some of his various actions with said white supremacist group. Okay. And he got two prison t prison tattoos, right. uh, not swastikas, that signified his, his affiliation. Yeah. yeah. So when he got out of jail, he received um, Whittier, Carol Whittier, as his probation officer. Mm -hmm. Carol is a 45-year-old black woman living in Colorado oh, Springs. Oh. So right now you're thinking, this is not going well. And she said, I'm not going to judge you. And their first meet, she goes, I'm not going to judge you on your past. Right. And she says, I want you to eventually not judge me on my skin color. Right. I'm going to start by not judging you. Well, here's the interesting thing. After a while, th their time together blossomed into a friendship. And he, she actually started to have some influence on him and taught right. him more about taking care of his children, taught him more about finding jobs and some right. of the things that he could do. And after a while, she, he, he took down the neo-Nazi banners at his house and then he said, well, it looks kind of bare now. So she brought all these smiley face posters over and like tacked them up where all the neo-Nazi banners <laughs> used to be. So you know you know already this woman's awesome. She goes, if you wake up with a smile, you're going to go to work with a smile, Kent. And he's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> but... This is the thing that's really really cool. In less than a year right. um, of having this friendship and having this probation officer relationship, right. he s decided to renounce um, the white su supremacist lifestyle, and he, oh, that's cool. he he got his tattoos taken off. It's really cool. It's it was a fifteen hour procedure. It was pretty brutal. Did they cover him? Um, but this is the thing. It's it's an organization called Redemption Tattoo. Oh. And they um, they cover up like right. white white supremacists right. and gang tattoos and uh, those kinds of like tattoos. Like a unicorn, they just go right over it. They can go over them or they can strip them. They can right. get them to fade. But I love the fact, and they go completely on self funded. You know, they have people donate. But I absolutely love right. that. So it gives people a second start because when yeah. you see a tattoo like that, you're going to judge someone. I mean, you are. Well, right. So he works on a chicken farm Plus now. Plus, you get to see it all the time, and and, and then your kids, for goodness' sake. Oh, that's the one that would scare me. Yeah. He works on a chicken farm now with 15 other employees, and he's fine with being the only white guy in the <laughs> workplace and, he's, and he said his favorite party he attended that year and I know I'm going to mispronounce it is right. the coming out party of one of his co-workers daughters so Pien, Pien, right. Cien, Cien, Right, that's close enough I just and there's a picture of him standing there and, and with his co-worker and his cute little daughter and she's wearing the big gigantic gown big gigantic and gown and he's got no and, swastika tattoos and he's there that is that is very good and all because of this woman who said I am not going to judge you just got to find the right person that's incredible all right coming up we're going to tell you um, um Christopher's uh, we're gonna we're, yeah we're gonna tell you about that but coming up this lady is gonna burn in hell uh, but first of all Ooh. let's talk about steaks because steaks are delicious and steaks. why are we talking about steaks now that is something you wanted roasted over flames because especially when it's a Christopher Pl Christopher's prime steakhouse we want to send you there and this it's is our thank you delicious. to you for actually sticking with us and, and we following us from you know our past life till now and. I know the stripper thing bothered some people, but I was good at it. So anyway, <laughs> what we want to do is say thank you. And all you have to do to register for this is? Just go to one of our Facebook pages. If you're watching at this point in the show and you make a comment now, we'll know that you were watching when we talked about Christopher's and you're automatically entered to win. It's really that embarrassingly simple. It's the Gephardt Daily or the Gephardt Approved or the Todd and Aaron Facebook page. We have a winner. As a matter of fact, our winner today is Carol F. Congratulations Carol. to Carol F. You and three friends are going to Christopher's. 
and I'll be contacting you today to let you know how to get that all set up. All right, coming up, we've got the lady who's going to burn in. Oh, yeah, she's so Yeah, she is going to burn. That's next. Yeah. Todd and Aaron's Morning Stream, brought to you by Black Diamond Experts. Electric, plumbing, heating, and air conditioning. You'll be glad you called an expert. Fink and McGregor, mortgage is made simple. Make sure you go to fink-mcgregor.com and try out their four-minute mortgage program. It's incredibly easy to find out whether you qualify. The Todd and Aaron Morning Stream is actually available anytime at gepharddaily.com. Just click on the Todd and Aaron page. All right, so I, I guess I don't understand this story. This is very exciting to me. Now, you, you know about the French law that has actually been in place for about four or five years where they had a body mass ratio oh, yeah. for like for Paris Fashion Week and for all of their models saying, you, you have to be within like this ratio, which is still close to starvation. but It's like a bag of antlers. It's, it's an, But it's the closest to healthy ratio they could find for body mass. Okay. And so basically what they were saying is girls were literally starving themselves to be models. Right. And, uh, you know, but all of a sudden the average size was size two for a model. Then it was size zero. Then it was size zero, zero. And, these and the normal woman is what? 14. 14, size and, 14. And the average uh, height of a, a model is between 5'9 and 5'10". And you're right. like a hundred pounds. Right. So there, I wish we had that law here because I thought it was magnificent that it was taken there, okay. where it's all about so that's, glamour. So that's in France. So the newest implemented law from them is that they also now have to um, magazines have to disclose: Did you Photoshop this image of this model? Mm -hmm. Did you Photoshop it to make her look thinner? Because realistically, let's it's just the image. Everybody knows that. Uh, right. uh, the thing that makes me sad though is I think young men get this completely unrealistic vision of who they should fall in love with because nobody looks like that. Not even the model model looks like that but they have this vision that this is what a pretty girl is supposed to look like it's like barbie and yeah and it's not it's like impossible that. to have yeah. that weight in those hips so it's interesting so getty images which is i think one of the two or three biggest it, photo sharing services in, okay. in the world okay so you know what we're just going to go with this right now and we're going to make this international they right. said we are not going to accept a photo submissions um of, of photoshop people to make them look thinner. Right. Um, and it's interesting, I was actually trying to find you an image that was a before and after showing like a normal human being and then how they photoshopped them. I couldn't find any of that were legal, so I thought, okay, I'll get a picture of a heavier woman mm -hmm. who'd look like the rest of us, maybe in a swimsuit, and then I'll photoshop her to show you. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't find any of those. And I kept using different search designations. Apparently, you literally are not allowed to have a photograph of you in a swimsuit if you're heavier. I mean, that's literally at the point we're at now where you're not even allowed to be visible if you're heavy. I mean, that's mm. I, literally that's what I felt because I was like, I cannot find a photo to even use. I was going to, I showed Erin the ones uh, of me I, I wanted to use and she wouldn't let me. Well, honey, the koi look was very sweet, but it wasn't the same. In any case, I thought it was cool. That is cool. And it's one of those strike backs against this unrealistic imagery that we're giving everybody of this is, you're not pretty if you don't look like this. That's, it's like, they don't look like that. I keep saying, if you, if you, and I hear this every once in a while a little bit, but if you're a designer and you start designing uh, clothes for real women that are cool looking, you, oh, we jump on you'd like be white a on rice. billionaire in oh. like a week. Seriously. All right. Uh, Maria, Maria, the, um, hurricane, the hurricane, Maria. she uh, did a huge amount of damage, and some of the things that came out of this were surprising. But she, but she left a few little things she, behind. In this case, she little did. Little mementos. Uh, Carolina, uh, North Carolina, there's a beach called Hatteras, and it is one of the stormiest. Cape Hatteras. I actually camped there when I was a kid and almost blew away. I had a summer house there with my friends. Did you? Um, well, there would have been something on the beach, and we like to call them, look at these, landmines. Wow. Now, in World War II, wow. they used these, and you can see the hatch on the up left corner right there, and that's where they put in all the explosives. And the spikes are actually uh, rods, and when a ship hits the rod, it pushes it in, detonating the incredible large amount of explosives. Well, this one that washed up um, was a, a practice mine. Except for that wasn't the only one, was it? Yeah, there's another practice mine that showed up on another beach, which is kind of weird. What are the chances of that happening? But, I mean, you didn't know they were practice, did you? No, you certainly wouldn't that notice would until, just... yeah, until you knocked on it. Cause I, no. but, but this happens all the time. You've seen this where there's munitions or something, and people, like, tap on them or they tap them against Bring them. Bring me a hammer! It's like, why are and hold you, my beer. Why are you doing that when you know it's an explosive? Four feet in diameter. Wow. Go ahead, Bob. Hit it harder. 
All right, now we were talking about people who are going to hell. I would like to introduce you to Belle Gibson. Now, on first glance, Belle actually looks like she's kind of a cute Let girl. Let me see. Hi, she, girl. She looks like a cute girl. She's How got the you? eyebrows. She's got the hair. She's Australian. What are you doing, you Aussie? And uh, you Aussie. she became a very powerful Australian so. role model because she shared her story, which was very emotional about having overcome five different kinds of cancer. What? Five different kinds of cancer. And when she talked How about she it. she do it? She said, you know what, I, I, I don't want to use drugs. I want to do this with clean eating, and I want to be healthy. Right. And so she, her will was unbreakable. I mean, she put all these chirpy photos up of herself and, and all of her, and running and healing, and, and I'm overcoming cancer. And it was very inspiring. And so they did the whole pantry, which is something that they did with Apple. They even had an app on the Apple Watch where you could go and you could get clean for living her, for recipes her? and all these things. And right. she wrote a great book about the whole Did she make money pantry. on this? What'd she do? Oh, over 500000 dollars just on that small venture alone and she said right. you know i'm giving all of this to cancer treatment places hey, may i say something it's a donation you're starting to get like that sarcastic tone in your voice well as it, this is people who are going to burn in hell so as it turns out yeah not only did she not donate anything oh well she did donate like three thousand dollars that's all that they could track yeah so not only did she not donate any of her money it turns out she never had cancer at all ever oh so while this woman has been pimping out her cookbooks, actually some of the recipes are delicious, I have to admit. While this woman was pimping out her cookbooks, people were abandoning traditional cancer treatments that to would save this. their life to eat healthy, clean. I mean, oh you should do that anyway, but you have to have chemotherapy too. So, if that's the case, your case. Yeah, or whatever it is. But oh my gosh. Yeah, so they just barely sentenced her. She's been fined. Uh, she has to return all of the money. Um, over $500,000 she's been fined and she has, I think it's a very small jail time. I think it should have been larger to be honest. But just the whole enormity and, and Australians are furious because they all really dug into her. She was like this she national like hero because you, saved, yeah. you saved yourself. You know, you she's fought. like the kind of person who'd be like on Oprah, kind right? Of like, kind She'd of like be like Lance, that level. It was like a Lance Armstrong kind of thing till we found out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, oh. yeah. All right. So, yeah, she doesn't have any of those things. I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. You want to play? Yes, of course. All right. Let's do, oh, I'm going to save that one. Okay, so um, you're getting married. Uh, you found the love of your life. Uh, you go, okay, that's creepy. Okay. Uh, and you go and you, and you have the ceremony and stuff. And right after the ceremony. You I take the pictures, yeah. I didn't realize that. So they you get, no, you have a pretty scene, and, right. and the they bride and the off. groom have a moment alone where they can be like giddy and have a pretty picture taken. Right, and, right. Well, Brittany and Clayton, they got married, and they did that, and they were by a park, and so they went off a little bit secluded with a photographer and leaned against a tree. UF and, foliage. And they did, you know, foliage. like that, and they did the heart thing, and uh, they were really adorable. And then um, all of a sudden, for without warning, Clayton uh, jumped in the river. Why? The bride's like, where'd he go? Is he attempting the photographer's to like, what's going? And all of a sudden they see he dove in the river. He's swimming out. There's a little boy having a hard time keeping his head above water. Boom. Is there that, he is. Is, that, is this guy like a boss or what? So this Jumped in, tuxedo he and saw all. him, saw him floundering. Suit. Knew he was going down. Of course you would. Oh, well, naturally you would, but like a boss. I mean, just the, yeah. the elegance of like... I'm I gone, think, I'm in, I've got the boy. And he's so cool, his carnation is still on. His boutonniere. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. But it's so funny because the bride was looking the other direction. Meanwhile, he's already in the water and she's like, Where where's Clayton? Where and then the photographer was there and he saw that he was handling it, so he starts taking pictures. That was very inspiring. Was, Wait, and he's got like bonus points like with the in laws for the rest of his life. That it's is, like, you remember that time our son in law saved that little boy at the can wedding? Can you even <laughs> imagine the honeymoon? Yeah. All right. You would go that way, wouldn't you? Have We're to. talking about a beautiful life saving moment, and right. you have to go there. Well, see, maybe I do just to compensate for what happened when I saved you from the bear and then you just kind of went to sleep. You're going to bring this up again? And there I the was. The bear repelling jets. There I was. I was like the, 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 the Viking guy who saves the woman from the bear. And then you just say, oh, that's great. And then you fall asleep and I'm all pepped up and... and it, he really did actually save me from a bear. We and she really cabin. did actually was, go to sleep have, right afterwards. We were on the fold-out couch, and my foot was literally like this far from yeah. the screen door. Yeah. And Todd started watching the screen poke in because it was the bear's face as he was coming through our screen mm -hmm. door. And I, he leaped up, and I'm staring. And I go, what are you doing? He goes, get out! And he started doing what I can only recall as bear-repelling jazz hands. Yeah. 
And so, no, but for like an hour, we ran from window to window because no, he did. didn't leave. No, you stayed in the bed. No. I walked around with my no, 45 we and, uh, and, and waited and stuff. I was and up I came you. in and you fell asleep. And I, here I was, your knight in shining, ar shining armor. Let's move on. Coming up. You're just never going to let that go, are you? Never. You realize that was 12 years ago. Never. 12 years ago. And that's why I said the honeymoon for this guy. Years. That's right. Why don't you just go ahead and take a nap and I'll wait for another bear to come along. All right, so coming up next, the world is running out of stuff. And it is the weirdest mm. stuff. You would not expect that In this would be a scarcity. Including right? dirt. It's all coming up. We're brought to you this morning by Executive Transportation. Elegant service, professional style. Go to executiveutah.com. And All Utah Plumbing. Your home deserves the best. 24-hour emergency service at allutahplumbing.com. Did you know you can catch the Todd and Aaron morning stream any time of the day or night on Facebook, YouTube, and SoundCloud, and gepharddaily.com? All right, so here's the stuff we're running out of. The world is running out of these following things. Uh, sand. What? Well, first of all, all mining, 85% of the mining in the world is for aggregate. Aggregate is rocks and stuff that you build uh, roadbeds on. Mm -hmm. they, it happens, it's sand is in your toothpaste for whitening toothpaste. It's everywhere. And we're actually starting to run o out of it. China actually used um, uh, more in, in the last uh, two years, four years, it used more aggregate sand and rocks than the entire 20th century century for America. Wow, that's not scary at all. Sand. Effective gonorrhea treatments. We don't need a picture on no, that. No, remember the old days, though, when you could get a shot and it's, you're taken care of? No, no. Tell, tell us more about that shot you got. You know I didn't get one, so don't even start. Yeah. But, but what they were finding, there were certain <clears throat> STDs that people no longer took particularly seriously because they were fairly easy to treat. Gonorrhea right. has started mutating. See? And uh, now they have a difficulty in being able to treat it with the traditional methods. And gonorrhea, apparently, when it's spread throughout your body, is a bad, bad thing. I would imagine. Even the name is scary. Um, here's another thing. Helium. I've seen helium shortages all the time. Like when I try to go get birthday balloons, they go, we, well, we have a shortage. We won't get anything until Friday. Mm -hmm. It's also used, if you ever had an MRI, you go into the room and there's also tanks that are, because of the magnetic deal, yeah. uh, they're actually chained to the wall. It's helium. Because they use helium to cool down the superconducting magnets inside. And it's also a non-renewable. There's only a certain amount of helium in the world. And I didn't now, know that. And now they're starting to go, well, what are we going to do? It's a non-renewable gas? Yes. I had no idea. And did you know lethal injection drugs are short on supply? That's probably a good thing because it means <clears throat> we're not using them, isn't it? Depends how you look at it. Dirt. Scientists say they, they've 60 years of topsoil are gone. Wow. 60 years worth. Because they say farming in the same land with the same crop actually... It just turns the dirt into nothing. It, it doesn't have anything in it anymore. No microbes and all that stuff. Interesting. All right. Uh, we're going to miss the, skip that one. Fish. Now, we know more about this because we talked about the fisheries and, and the fact that they're the closing, oceans they're and closing, things that are happening down, and closing down certain fisheries and putting really strict limits on them. Like one of the, uh, one of the um, I think it's herring. It's herring in Alaska. The herring season is 21 minutes long. All the boats get in position. They drop. They have helicopters. They have planes spotting for them. They drop their nets. Twenty-one, 21 minutes. minutes, and it has to be in the boat. And that's to protect. Wow. That's to protect. And if you ever watch Dangerous Catch, they have a limit of how many pounds they can catch uh, before the season's out, and they have to fill that limit and no more. So that's going to obviously be a food problem. A fish. Data storage. Isn't that interesting? By 2020, the estimate, 26 billion connected devices, not including X, roughly 7 billion smartphones, PCs, and tablets, and the current billions of silicone-based hard drives in the world are hardly keeping up as we speak. Let's see what I just did there. I talked about technology when I know so little. Hmm. Nurses. This one kills me. Explain well, this it shouldn't. One. The nurses will be there to save your life. Ideally. Tell me what this is about. Well... It's, the, it's a factor of deficits. Uh, the, actually, they're searching for nurses all the time mm -hmm. and to keep them up on, on you know, keeping them employed. It's, and, and it's hard because nursing, I mean, they basically, if you've been in the hospital, I've been in the ICU, I saw a doctor 
once in four days. And the rest of the people taking care of me were nurses. Well, here's the deal. From 2010 to 2030, the number of senior citizens in the U.S. alone will increase by 75%. 69 million people, and one out of every two older adults, anyone over the age of 50, has some kind of a chronic condition. Right. And they can't even begin to keep up with that. They're, they're, all the hospitals now, medical systems, are bracing for this explosion because it's like elder care is going to be everything. So if you're going to go to college or you want to get some training, what do you want to train in? Something that you'll become indispensable. Oh, I remember right. nurses, nurses at the hospital. I'd be there, and they'd be talking. I go, "Did you get poached from another state?" She goes, "Totally." Yeah. California doubled yeah. my salary. I went, "Good for you." Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're poaching everywhere. It's interesting. So yeah, so I mean, French literature is a good major, um, but if you want to eat, perhaps nursing is the way. Do we have information coming That's a good up? Thought. Yes, as a matter of fact, Daisy is in the Gephardt Daily Newsroom. She is brought to you by Think and McGregor Mortgage is made simple. If you go to think mcgregorcom you're going to find all kinds of different options you would not have expected. Also, it is brought to you by Black Diamond Experts, electric, plumbing, heating, and air. Uh, with everything going on this fall, this is a good time to make sure that your furnaces are working and your water outside is turned off. They would be your guys at blackdiamondexpert.com. Daisy, my dear, what is going on today? Good morning, Todd and Aaron. Hello again, everyone. Here's what's making national and world news Friday, September 29th on GebhardtDaily.com. The FBI is offering $5 million for information leading to the arrest of the head of a drug cartel in Mexico's Sinaloa state, Fausto Isidro Meza Flores, also known as El Chapo Isidro, was charged in a federal indictment on narcotics and firearm violations. The FBI believes he's living in Mexico and said he was considered to be the right-hand man of Alfredo Beltran Leva, the leader of the organization bearing his name prior to his arrest in 2008. The European Commission issued new guidelines on illegal hate speech and terrorism-related internet content on Thursday, demanding that online platforms get more aggressive in removing illegal content. The 20-page report calls on Microsoft, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube to improve its detection capabilities. The report recommends that companies forge stronger relationships with trusted flaggers of content who are trained in the EU definition of hate speech and develop automatic detection technologies. And have you ever wanted a personal submarine for yourself and your two best friends? Well, it's becoming a real option thanks to Aston Martin. The luxury automaker has partnered with Triton Submarines to create a design for its first submarine. The concept design aims to lead to the development of a limited edition three-person vessel. No word yet on what the cost on that would be. That's it for now. For more headlines from across the country and around the world, go to GetParkDaily.com. Todd and Aaron, back to you. Thank you, Daisy. We appreciate it. Um, Black Diamond Heating and Electric Plumbing, Heating and Air, they're the experts. And they just opened up a brand new shop in Ogden, by the way. So they're even closer to you up north should you need them. Because this really is the perfect time of year. This is when you want like outside water shut off. You want to make sure that your sprinklers are settled properly so that when you try to turn them on next spring, there's not a hideous explosion. You want to make sure that your furnace is running right, that it's highly efficient, uh, that there's no cracks, that there's no carbon monoxide or other problems. And it's, you could go with someone who's going to quote you a bazillion dollars and Black Diamond doesn't really do that because they're like, no, we can just fix this and here's a filter. You're okay. Um, and whatever bid they do give you is what you're going to pay. They don't mess with you. They don't add on little extra bits. You can count on what you're spending, and that is it. So that's one of the reasons I really like them. And if you go to blackdiamondexpert.com, uh, you can take a look at the services and maybe get an appointment. It is blackdiamondexpert.com. This is a cool story, and it's uh, the Mavericks, Dallas Mavericks. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Mark Cuban owns those. Mark Cuban is a uh, million billionaire. He owns the team. I like him except for when he's sitting in uh, down at, uh, I was, what is it called now? Courtside? No, the big gigantic one where the jazz play. I keep forgetting. Vivint. Vivint Smart. Delta Radio. Center. I know. I'm going old school on you. That was the only time I hated him because he sat in front of us once and I just wanted to set fire to his hair. But every other time, this guy's actually pretty funny and interesting. Actually, he is really. J.J. Um, Abria? Abria. So. Abria. Uh, he is a native of Puerto Rico. Now, so what happened is, obviously, they got their butts kicked um, by, by the, the hurricane and 
uh, he's got family there. I'm sure he's freaking out. Yeah, he's freaking out. He didn't talk to him for like five days, and he's like freaking out. Uh, the team is about to start practice and stuff coming up, and uh, Cuban says, "Why don't you take the um, the team's plane? Take the jet." So they loaded up a bunch of stuff like supplies to take over to Puerto Rico. And the deal is, then they're going to turn around and come back and do it again. And the and the th reason is one of the reasons is first of all he wanted to do something he wanted to have some impact and I guess it was a lot of it was medical and stuff like that. His mom and his sister were there and he scooped them up. And his dad stayed because his dad said I I've got to stay and help I got to do this and get the get the ladies to safety and stuff like that and if you need to if you can uh, send some other stuff down so he gave him like satellite phones and you know all that kind of stuff take care of him. That is adorable. It really is cool, though. This is back to what we were talking about, that the government didn't seem to be as responsive until celebrities started going on after it, and then the regular public's like, yeah, why aren't you? Right. What's going on? Um, Pitbull is funny. Pitbull is, I really love his music, but he did pretty much the same thing. He um, he did, and he did it without saying anything to anybody, but he sent over his private jet repeatedly, and he actually flew over a couple of times to right. help with some of the rubble, but right. that's adorable. It's not something you would expect from a pop star. I just think it's funny that, that Mark Cuban would be like, this here take the jet <laughs> i trust you son bring it back full though okay <laughs> it's true yeah you know that jet let's just take that shall we all right coming oh up gosh. next no good deed goes unpunished you try to rescue someone from a burning car oh don't tell in the end that's a spoiler it's oh, coming up next it's gonna be bad we're brought to you this morning by executive transportation elegant service professional style go to executiveutah.com and all utah plumbing your home deserves the best 24-hour emergency service at allutahplumbing.com did you know you can catch the todd and aaron morning stream any time of the day or night on facebook youtube and soundcloud and gephardaily.com that's crazy it's i gotta tell you a story it's called uh and, and it's a game it's called what happens next and you get to fill in the blank. Uh, there's a lady, and her first name is Tequila. I, I like her that. already. So she should be a stripper, because all strippers are named after liquor. Okay. Brandy. Brandy. Yeah. All right, so here's the deal. She's, uh, she's, from, I she's from Idaho, and she was up in Washington State. And so anyway, she's driving along. They go and stop at this store, right? Mm -hmm. And she turns around, and she looks over, and there's a truck, and it's on fire. That's bad. What happens next? Um, Wait, before you say that, she looks inside, and there's a kid in there. Oh, my God. And okay. the truck's on fire, and there's no adults. What happens next? Uh, I would get the closest, like, fire extinguisher or hose or something. I would go over there and try to smash it, get him out. Funny you should get, bring that up. get this up. little guy out, yeah. Funny you should bring that up. There were other people trying to get to it and stuff, and they was, the doors were starting to get too hot, and they couldn't get the doors open, and they were like, ah, the fire. And then she looks over, and there's a little store right there. Glass door. She's thinking. Goes She's to the thinking back of woman. her truck, picks up a pipe, goes over, smashes that window, rushes in, grabs the extinguisher, comes out and sprays everybody down, puts the fire out to get the kid out, saved. What an amazing woman. And what happens? I love Tequila's presence of mind because right. a lot of people wouldn't be looking around for a fire extinguisher. Right. And then if the door's locked, then you're like, well, we'll try somewhere else. No, but she just busted it and got it out. That what happens sweet. next? Um, she gets the key to the city from the mayor. Ooh, the, the child's that mom is a good thought. The child's mom cries uncontrollably and hugs her and says, "Thank you for saving my baby." That I probably happened. Everything. That probably happened as well. But unfortunately, the state trooper showed up, and he stated, "Unless you're willing to pay for the glass door, I'm going to have to arrest you." What? It was an emergency. He was telling me that using a fire extinguisher that doesn't belong to me is theft and you're not allowed to steal it, no matter how good your intentions. The, he's joking, right? He's screwing with her? He's screwing no. with her. No, come on, he's messing with her. There's no way. No, there's uh, finally his supervisor showed up and tucked him back in his little car and told him not to move. They were going to arrest her for breaking the window and stealing the fire extinguisher. He wanted to pay for it right then and there. To save a child's life right. in a burning car. Yeah. You know, I usually don't carry, a, let's see, a broken store window. You're talking about that thick thermopane glass. With a wire in it. A couple thousand, two thousand, how much would that be to repair that? Probably about $800. 
I don't carry eight hundred dollars around with me I know. like that. Nor a fire extinguisher. Apparently, no. Hence the B and E, the breaking and entering. Wow. Uh, so there you go. That's what happens next. Nope. Uh, obviously, she got out of it, and she didn't have to do that. And the boy was saved, and everybody lived happily ever after. Except for the trooper, I'm hoping, because that's just... Now, I know we can't afford a vacation, but if we could, how much would it cost? Well, it was interesting. They were actually tracking what it would cost for going from here in Utah to some of the top... There's, like, the top ten vacation spots in the okay. world. All right. And they did it... They had a kind of a pretty good methodology. They did plane tickets for two adults and two children. Yes. Um, hotels were, like, for a five-night stay. They chose lowest price. There was certain mileage. So okay. they tried okay. to do okay. what a family on a budget Where would, are we going? would price. Well, the number one, um, the what number one destination that was the most expensive, right. Paris. You go to Paris. Eighty six hundred dollars for a family of four. There it is, the Louvre. Eighty six hundred dollars. Louvre. And then there's Rome, which was yeah sixty four hundred. Wait, wait. Eighty six hundred for wait, Paris. Wait, wait. eighty six hundred dollars for four people mm -hmm. for five nights. Mm -hmm. And then okay. London's 5300 53 Now we're getting now, reasonable. Tell me this is not weird. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina was 3600 I've been there. How $3, much? $3,600. For five days. Branson, Missouri. This is where you're like, oh, it's all down home. It's all great. They got country music. No, 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 no. That's expensive as crap. That's $3,400. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Now here's the one that's going to kill you. The next one is New York City. Remember once again that we're talking like 8400 for Paris, 6400 for London, right? Right. New York City would only be twenty five. And there's so much to see. It's like a third of the price of, of like Paris. It's like, and plus no one will spit in you go, you don't speak French. They're not all like that. No, they're not at all. It was just a story that one of my brothers They're all kind of smelly us. though. I'm no, they're so, not. I'm so kidding. Please don't hurt me. We have friends of ours who are French and they're going to hurt me now. Yeah, yeah. She's going to totally kill you for that. She's kick Can me right in the fromage. You would deserve it. Cancun, Mexico, $1,800. Okay. Not bad. All right. Cancun. Not bad. I see that. This one surprises me for affordability. San Francisco, $1,700. Really? That's really good. That is. Uh, Miami, $1,700 as well. But here was the one that was the lowest, and this shocks me because okay, anything I'm Disney related, I'm prepped for oh, it. Right, right, right. This is going to cost yeah. only $1,600 for a family of four for five nights, including airfare. Plus sixteen hundred dollars for tickets to Disneyland, <laughs> so, so that really doubles the cost, <laughs> doesn't and it? I was just, I thought and it was that's interesting. not that's not for five days of Disneyland. That's for like one. Oh, or maybe a, so young and so bitter. I'm not that young. But you are so um, bitter. <laughs> so that's uh, okay. Where would you go right now if you could go anywhere on a vacation? Australia. You go to Australia. Australia, Sydney, Australia. I'd go to Sydney, Australia. I'd go. To, I'd go there with you. I know you would. Can we go to the outback? It's hot there, and there's a lot of spiders. Wouldn't you want to stay on the coast? There's a lot of spiders. I have friends in Australia. She the has, whites, the white, great whites are the sharks. Let's just put it that that she's my friends. She one of them is very, very proud of the fact that she says we have more venomous things that can kill you here in Australia than all oh, the rest of the world combined. That's like a T-shirt. They should put that on a T-shirt. So stay on the coast, and all you're worried about are the great whites. <clears throat> no, <clears throat> a lot of people when they go on vacations, they take pictures of themselves. Were you going to tell me about that? Selfies, perhaps? You know, this is this is an almost Darwin. Like, they were this close to Darwin, and I... I is, is this a story that is tragic, but we're going to laugh? Yeah, kind of. Okay. Okay, there's a man who was far away doing what he was supposed to. Of what? Was, he was snapping pictures of these elephants on a, on a Thailand preserve. Oh, yeah, Thailand preserve. Beautiful, you know, incredible... How far away? Display. Look, safety... Like, safe far away. Okay, Because there's long-range camera lens now. You can shoot from really far away. Right. So he's he's doing this and he's admiring nature and being beautiful. And then he noticed these two tourists come jogging down the road, and they start going towards the elephant. What? And then they take out their cameras and they're about to do selfies. Yeah. And the elephant's like, "No, I can't let this one go." So he starts chasing them down oh my down gosh. the road. Show the picture. Oh this my is gosh. for real. Look at. The and I'm like, they're so close. They're almost ready to step on them. Almost. You're almost there. Um, but uh, apparently he stopped chasing them and they stopped for a minute. He started chasing them again. It's like they could not figure it out until they had, he had chased them like a mile away and then they gave up trying to take the selfie. Oh my gosh. You mean they stopped and tried to take it they again? They tried it again as soon as he stopped. Like he chased them for a while like, get out of here. And then when he stopped and sort of turned, they tried again. Three times. That's where I'm like. So I'm, did the elephant. I'm like rooting for the <laughs> elephant at this point. 
Oh my God. So another tragic. All right. So another related accident. N- another lesson from the Todd and Aaron morning stream is don't take pictures of elephants and get that close. Selfies. No selfies with elephants. All right, there you go. Well, I hope you guys have a great weekend, and uh, we're going to be back on Monday morning with a Todd and Aaron morning stream. We have all kinds of Halloween-y things coming up, because that will be the 1st of October. We already smell like pumpkin spice. We'll see you Monday. Excretes from our...